Good evening, Sembonani Dumelang, and welcome to episode 123 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamantungwa Kumalo. It's a Thursday edition of the Private Property Podcast, and this evening we're going to be looking at something that so many of us probably need a little bit of help with. We're going to be exploring the four expert lessons in, in making sure that you sustain success in home ownership. You're probably thinking, what does it even mean uh, you know, to have sustainable home ownership? Well, that's certainly some of the things that we're going to be exploring. And I'm very excited about the guests that we're going to be speaking to uh, this evening. We're actually having such a great conversation off air that we probably uh, would have continued for hours and end before coming on air. And this evening, I'm joined by Usoli Munife Sutuaro, who is the founder and director of Seth Small. Uh, good evening, Soli. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening, Zama, and good evening, the audience. So, I mean, Soli, I think one of the big things is you know, viewers at home have probably never even heard of this term of you know, sustainable home ownership. Uh, before we even get to what that means and you know, some of the things that you've certainly picked up and some of the trends that you've picked yeah. up from with various consumers in your career, um, particularly in property, let's maybe start, I'll say almost at the beginning, just a brief overview of your, I'll say your story in property, because it's such an interesting one. I quite like it. And I'd like, you know, the viewers at home to just get a sense of how property is also not only this long-term goal, but there's so much knowledge that you are essentially able to get uh, from various people um, along your journey. Yeah, Zama, uh... 18 years of experience specializing in, in home ownership, we have picked up that there is a gap in the industry where, especially in the affordable market, where people are illiterate, semi-illiterate, semi, you know, people are not educated. And we found a gap where we need to fill that gap in educating our communities, our people about home ownership based on our historical background where we, we didn't have ownership at all. And here we are having ownership and we don't have that knowledge. Yeah. And uh, I, I mean, sorry, that's where we're coming from. Yeah, and I mean, sorry, I, I can just imagine nearly two decades worth of experience um, and especially in an area that maybe some people might not think is necessarily that sexy, but it's where there's such a big need, right? When you think of people who are in the affordable market segment, mm -hmm. that's actually where the need is to educate as much yeah. as possible. <clears throat> share with the, our listeners at home, you know, some of the, I'll say, pressure points that, um, you know, customers in the affordable market uh, segment typically have. So what are some of the challenges that you found over the years that they typically have that probably even make makes their home ownership journey mm -hmm. slightly difficult. Yeah, uh, I'll start from the end and finish at the beginning. The 18 years, what we have seen is that <clears throat> people are saying with our training and education that we provide them with, are saying I should have known you 10 years ago. I should have known this information 15 years ago. Where have you been? Now, when I end up the statement is to say, what, what is the basic Foundation, foundation of sustainable home ownership. The basic foundation is the four elements that, that we are talking about or the lessons as, uh, learned regarding sustainable home ownership. The education that is lacking out there doesn't educate people about the outcomes. The outcome of the education is that people don't know their rights, number one. People don't know their contractual obligations uh, uh, when when they are do agreements, they don't read documents. People are not accountable into the housing delivery value chain. And, 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 and at the end of the day, you, you find that people have not been responsible. So I, I believe these four key elements or these four elements or lessons needs to be enhanced and reinforced in such a way that there is, there is a mutual understanding between all value chain or all stakeholders and the consumer uh, understanding because when we reach when we talk to the consumer we're talking housing we're talking foreign language to them and that's where we fit in as an education and maybe then so you know let's explore those four mm. uh, you know essential essentially yeah. the lessons you know you're saying that the first one being sort of rights and responsibilities uh, what are some of the pressure points they what are some of the things that as consumers we ought to be knowing about our rights and responsibilities when it comes to yeah. home ownership sure zama yeah let's say that, let's look at the rights the first item as i said the rights 
which, which, which our constitution, section 26 in our constitution, it says everyone has got the rights to access adequate housing. And the rights are not being practiced with a knowledgeable uh, responsibilities or a knowledgeable mindset. You know, uh, exploitation is happening out there because of the consumer or the very same role players doesn't have the knowledge that, that that's number one on the rights to, to say, I can make an example of going shopping and then you find a teller there talking, not, not taking care of you. Your right is to complain and say, but you are not taking care of me. Imagine now in, 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 in property or in housing, how massive it is. Uh, people can't complain about cracks. People can't complain about this. They can't even read a plan you know, of a house, a basic education. So we believe that the rights are not being properly adhered to because of the lack of education. That's, that's my number one. Uh, number two, which is critical nowadays is the contractual obligations that have been signed uh, we see the consumer signing documents without reading. We see the consumer not even understanding what he's signing because of the pressure of, of owning a house and the desperation of owning a house. And as I said, the historical background of access to housing and politically, you know, there's so many pressures that mm -hmm. and, and someone gives an opportunity or a chance to own a house, you'll sign the documents only to find out at the end of the day you, you sign your death certificate, you know, and 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 exploitation kicks hits you hard. Uh, what pains me is the repossessions nowadays. You know, uh, uh, there's a there's a dispute of repossessions. There's a dispute of the landlord and the tenants. You know, and, and there's so many disputes because of this gap of education. Uh, now the responsibilities of 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 the third one is the responsibilities of owning a house. Uh, our communities there, they still believe in owning houses. That's it. They don't know the value attached. They don't know the monetary value that you need to look after this house. You need to pay your rent. You need to pay for electricity and water. I know I'm touching other people when I talk about electricity and water. You need to so it's so in its studio. <laughs> so I think the whole I know He's listening okay, right no, now, yeah. thinking so he's coming for us, and <laughs> they're gonna be in the comment section because we've yeah, yeah. Them, you know across okay. the board. That it that's, is what very contentious ones. Okay. That's that's what that's number three, right? Yeah. Now the last one, the accountability. Uh, 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 we saw this one coming in the financial sector, uh, especially if I can quote some 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 organizations that are doing a good job there. Uh, the National Credit Regulator when it was formed, to say, if I owe you money, I must declare that, I must come forth and, and explain to you that I can't afford. And we can look at other mechanisms to, 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 to assist you to pay your, your debt. So we believe the gap of education fits in well there to say, your, your, your responsibility and accountability of the agreements you know how I link them, the contractual obligation that you made and your rights coming together, you owe money, this guy borrowed you money, you need to pay this guy. It's a bond, for an example. It, it's it's non-negotiable, you need to pay. Failure to do that, you must come forward. You know, what I like about the, 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 the financial sector and the NCR is that they said, come forward, don't run away. But the mindset of non-payment is still out there. Remember our story, our historic background, we still have that element of of, of I like the way toy toying, you know, <laughs> using that kind of an element to say, people say, no, it's my house. They have no clue about those three elements that I've talked about all those lessons. So I, I, I'm appealing to, to, to the audience or to ever to say, you can come, you don't have to lose that house. That's why I'm preaching sustainable home ownership has got a solution. If you have challenges, there are solutions. All you need is knowledge. And, and, and these four lessons that we have learned uh, uh, the knowledge that we impart is not been professionalized, Zama. It, it's mm. been sold uh, at, uh, at a fraction of, of a click of a button. You know, digitally you go in, you find homeownership everywhere. It's not been professional. My word is not been professionalized to say you can give a certificate on, and say this person knows he's, what he's doing or what he's getting himself into. And should it happen that he's in trouble, how can he or she be assisted or who to contact, who to consult 
in 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 short to say yeah people are clueless there they just i'm worried and concerned about that and as said small we say we have been in this industry for 18 years the education we specialize on that can they please make sure before they take an informed decision you know because out there is uninformed is no give me give me give me i'll pay i'll pay i'll pay five years down the line people are starting to have a dispute yeah my house is cracking my house is falling and i can't pay you now that's the issue that's what i'm saying fi financial obligations nowadays people are over indebted uh, people are not paying their bonds corona is hitting us left and right i'm simply saying the education is critical get information please yeah. Yeah. You know, when you say get information, I think of Beyonce, and I certainly do agree that we should get information. You know, so they perhaps take us through, you know, some of the mistakes that uh, a lot of, you know, homeowners potentially <laughs> make that makes it, you know, hard for them to, we'll say, sustainably own their homes. So what are some of those mistakes that um, a lot of us probably make, whether we've just bought our first home or in the process of buying our first home that hinders us from sustainably owning our homes as you've turned it okay the first mistake is buying a house because of pressure uh because of uh the, the environment or the circumstances of 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 your life on the stage and the age and the access to finance but <clears throat> one has got to understand that buying a house is a journey that it's gonna take you minimum 20 years. Uh, are you buying this for the first time or are you going to stay there or you're gonna move out? All those questions, you need to find yourself. Are you buying this house as a journey for your life? Is it at the right place? Is it at the right, you know, is it at the right price? All those things, they, they, there are so many elements that enter into that, but the critical one is the finance, what worries me a lot. People are going into these properties, buying them, not knowing the financial implication, not knowing the investment part of owning a house. Uh, the pressures I see them of, of having your family and your kids in the house. But the pressure that I'm having worried about is that that is not known, is the investment component. It's not been explained in an amicable level, in an understandable level to say, this is your money, you can grow it. It's, it's buying a house is like a poverty alleviation you know it's another strategy of of alleviating poverty because you are valuable you are worth five hundred thousand in affordable market you are worth a million bucks you must look after that that one million bucks which is a house you must sustain that and at the end of the day you must grow that money you know and, and educate them on how to grow a four-room house can be converted into a multi-million house if you know how to play the game it's not only 150,000 rent four room house. You can make a double store and convert it into a million bucks. How do you do that? People don't know those kind of information. They don't have that. So we're simply saying the challenges, and, and, and before I go forward, the, the, the worst challenges now is the bylaws. People are not adhering to bylaws. They, they, they extend the house up to the pavement of the municipality. Uh, 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 you know, people are building without NHBRC, they are building without municipality, they are building. Gee, right? I want five room house, let's go. And uh, you, it's, 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 it's scary. Well, well, it scares us to say we, we need to educate people. There are bylaws here. You can't put a two room at the, and say people are poor and then say people want accommodation. I'm simply preaching, let's do it right the, 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 the first time. Let's do it right. The, the information is there, the knowledge is there. Let the people be educated and be told to say this is not right, this is wrong. Let the people be accountable as I preach accountability in, in our education to say a small thing, bylaws. Go to the townships, bylaws have been broken left and right. Where are we going? It's almost <laughs> as though they simply do not uh, exists. So we're going to go for a quick break and when we come back, I want us to look at, you know, certainly some of the things that you, you believe current homeowners should always be aware of, because I think one of the big things is you mm -hmm. buy that home loan and let's say you were able to get some knowledge uh, and so you understand the severity of this yeah. contract that you're, you know, getting yourself into when you get a home loan and you buy a home but you probably don't know the full picture. So you know that bit, and perhaps you don't understand the full picture uh, of uh, you know, 
owning that home. We're of course going to be taking your questions and comments. I see you, Semi Mahlatsa, saying, I'm loving this gentleman's ideas. Uh, thank you very much there for the message. Do drop us, of course, your messages down here below. Send us those green hearts. We love seeing them. I also want to hear from you at home especially people who are already, you know, own their homes. So you might, may have taken up a bond, it can be, you know, a few months ago, a few years ago, uh, perhaps you've had it for over 10 years. What were some of the key lessons that, you know, you picked up early and learned um, that has helped you, you know, sustain certainly your home loan and be able to pay it on time, be able to make sure that your house is well kept and perhaps even grow the value of that house and perhaps even the different creative ways that you've been able to use that home loan facility. We know that having a home loan facility, there's so many really creative ways that you can be able mm -hmm. to tap into it in terms of accessing funds. Uh, and we've had episodes, you know, with sometimes the APSA team around how you go about accessing funds in your home loan. So it really can be a great way to grow your wealth um, just as a facility, especially when it's utilized well. So do share with us some of the tips that you've picked up along the ways and the lessons that you've picked up along the way in terms of how to best do that. We're going to go for a quick break and we'll be back just after this. Welcome back to the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamanto Mwakumalo. This evening, I'm joined by Salim Mulefe Sucharo, who's the founder and director at Set Small. And we're talking about, uh, you know, the four expert lessons in making sure that you have success in sustainable home ownership. I see Ubongs, Sabakwena, one of our regulars, uh, saying that we've got a legend in the house. Well, Bongs, you know that we do bring you the best of the best. And we certainly always want to make sure that we bring you expert guests to help us navigate our property journey. Sammy Matata saying knowledge is power, my good sir. Thank you. Uh, and I love only seeing hearts when, uh, you know, when you guys send us uh, your messages. So do keep them coming, especially those green hearts. We love hearing from you. If you have a, you know, a home loan facility or you've been paying off your home loan for X number of years, what have been some of the key lessons that you've been able to learn along the way that have really made it um, a success for you to have that facility? You've been able to always pay your bond on time every time. Perhaps you're even able to pay that little bit extra every single month. Maybe you even have your access bond facility that you've tapped into before you've refinanced the property. What have been some creative ways that you've been able to, you know, keep that home loan facility, but also utilize it in different ways. Now, Sally, I think one of the things that I certainly, you know, want us to explore then is what are some of the things that current homeowners, so we're now not talking about first time home buyers, you've already bought your house the first time, maybe you've even now on your second bond, what are some of the key things that they should know when it comes to, uh, you know, home ownership? Because sometimes I think we take it for granted that yeah. you sign on the dotted line, you start paying your home loan and you pay it mm. off nicely. The, you know, that bond debit order yeah. goes off without a glitch. But there are probably things that you still don't know along the way. Yeah, even definitely. As you know, have yeah. Home the, the, it, you know, you know the, 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 the recent one, the current one, which also makes my blood to run, is, is, is the interest rates. The current issue is interest rates, they are at their lowest. Sorry about that. They are at their lowest, and people think it's manna from heaven. Uh, uh, they are not preparing what's coming. You know, my concern is to highlight and, and, and highlight this issue to say the interest rates will never go down to 0%. <laughs> they, they need to go up, and we're on the uptrend now. They should prepare for what's coming and adjust let me put it in this way. Some people don't even have knowledge that what is the meaning of interest rates. <laughs> they don't have even a clue or what that they say. No, well, Tito Mboni said it. So what? Or Kanyago said it. Or what? 
the impact on their finances. What, what is worrying me is that the impact on their finances. Nowadays, it has been reduced uh, dramatically. People are they are saving close to three thousand from what they've been paying a year ago. For me, my advice for them will be, hey, keep paying at the same level. Don't go down or don't drop your installment. You know, uh, <laughs> tough times are coming. We are starting the tough times. As Corona fades away, you have seen what happened. People lost jobs. Uh, people, there's some, there's so much, but. Based on sustaining your house, the first issue for me will be protecting this interest rate, protecting my installment uh, going forward, ensuring that even if interest rate can, get back, can, can come back a year, you know, a year ago they were at about what? 10, 9, 10, 13%. Will they, will I be able in the next coming six months? I'm not even giving you a year, six months. Interest rate is going to shoot up to back to normal, to back to. To expensive to back to you know affordability i'm simply summarizing your affordability in paying your bond should be your priority zama mm. the rest will follow <laughs> i usually sing that song uh, other debts i can see them but my priority for me today my priority debts is my house bond the rest will follow otherwise mm. you'll find yourself in the streets uh, they will I, I don't prioritize the house, please, as number one. The car and other other utensils, other issues, they are they are necessities. They are not important to me. But I I see people playing a, a dangerous game where they they don't take this bond seriously, and they they can be destroyed. I'm not threatening anybody, but I'm simply saying you lose that house, you'll never be granted another bond for the rest of your life. So for me, I'm appealing to everybody, please look at this interest rate carefully and don't play around with your bond installment. Rather, pay extra. That's mm. my song nowadays. Yeah. Mm. And it's such, an, it's such a crucial song, you know, Sonny, because I think a lot of people, and, and we've even touched on this here on the Private Property Podcast, around how false, a false sense of affordability uh, is what we're seeing right now in the market, mm. that in as much as interest rates, uh, you know, prime is at 7%, Prior to lockdown, it was at ten percent. And when you yeah. when you interrogate that, in as much as some people are now able to access that first home loan or perhaps access uh, a home loan at the price point that they want, we always say in your calculations, see if you still be able to afford it if it was ten percent. If you are, great, go for it. Um, and if anything, that you should be using this period, you should be using to pay as much as possible into that home loan facility because the interest rates are so low. And exactly. I fully agree with you about paying extra um, or paying the same amount that you were paying when it was still at 10%, because if anything, um, you're now paying, you know, more. I always, you know, with a, a number of my, my various home loans, I actually have a, I've standardized it where I say, let's say a home loan is 6,000 rands and the minimum prescribed amount was like 4,000 rands. I have the debit order going off as six as standard, as opposed to having to manually load it. Because the moment you see that money in your account, you're not going to move it. You know, you're going to think you're liquid and going to use it on mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. We are, of course, taking questions and comments from our viewers at home. And uh, we've got a, a comment here from one of our regular viewers, Howard Mogatane, who says, um, it reminds me It reminds me of the recently demolished houses next to Roslyn. Yeah. How do you build without approvals? That, of course, uh, Sully is, you know, he's making reference to how sometimes when people don't know their bylaws and they end up building, mm -hmm. you know, the various homes in their yards and don't follow bylaws and make sure that they have the right approvals, then you end up um, seeing that happening. Uh, we've got a question here from Uglad Shirinda who asks, what are the pros and cons of early occupation? before registration yeah uh, you know when you occupy a house before registration as i've said the education part plays a role is to is an agreement between the the, the, the current owner and the potential owner uh, the current owner has got to move you know sometimes schedules have been put forward to say i need to occupy this house in the next month but there has to be an agreement of occupational rent which is signed, not verbally agreed only, signed where now we can practice our rights legally and everything. But we see a lot of people saying, 
if the process is still ongoing and you have signed some agreements, there should be occupational or a lease or a tenant agreement document to say on this day, this month, I'll pay so much. If things change, negotiation still needs to come back and say, I, I still need extension. The bond hasn't been, the title deed hasn't come up, transfer. It's a process. Remember, it's a, it's a process transferring property to someone else. But we're saying as, as, as the buyer and seller, there has to be, uh, my concern is that there has to be a, a, a documented document, you know, signed, explained, clarified to say your rights, you have the rights up to so much, up to so much period, uh, the, the, the seller's got so much. It mustn't be done in, in a, I, will, I don't want to put it in a, in an African way. It, 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 let, let's not put yeah, it in an African way. Side, we're talking Zongena. <laughs> Okay, yeah, okay. Then, yeah, no, no, Zama. Yeah, no, hey, hey, hey. and things happen upside down. War starts, so we're simply saying let them get information. Such more exists to give them the information and professionalize this industry within the affordable market. When we say affordable market below 1 million, 1.2 million, we're simply saying we appeal to professionalize this industry with this education. You know, some, 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 I might extend that if we have time. Some people might hire a room, rent a room, a backyard room. Uh, uh, it's not done professionally, it's done in an African way. I said, I don't put 500 rand. Only to find that that guy wants to bring a Sangoma in your house. Uh, what are you going to do with that? And he says, No, I'm paying you. Huh? It's a, 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 uh, you know, all together. And, and I think one of the things, we've, we've got a question here actually that uh, touches on you know, growing our property portfolios, which is coming from Uundogos or Kumalo, who says, hi, Zama and Sali, is it wise to accumulate more property using a large percentage of debt or to buy a few cash and slowly accumulate for rental property? Yeah, I, I think it depends on your financial situation. The banks can't stop you. The bank says, or the funder says, as long as you can prove to me that you can pay me, you can have as much as you can houses, but you must look at the consequences of having a lot of, of properties, management, and all those regulations, SAR, you name it. My advice is to say, take it slowly and learn more, grow with it. Remember, property is not, a, a, as I usually say, it's not a once-off thing or a one-shot thing. It's a journey. It's, 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 it, it talks about years in our country, 20 years minimum. So why hurry up to, to something that is going to drive you crazy? So go slowly, but surely grow, start with your property. I'll, I'll simply put in a test to say your house, what are you doing to grow? What does it mean to grow your house? You know, uh, people don't know that the 500,000 that I'm indebted with the bank as a loan, I can convert it into 700,000 in two, six months time. What am I doing? It's not, it's, not, it's not only that only. It's a lot of renovation, extensions, approved plans. It's a journey. So there's no quick fix in housing. <laughs> uh, and there's no cash loan or cash cow issue in housing. It's a journey. And you are building, we are building citizenship here. We are building our country here. We need to put a solid foundation, not just a random cash cow businesses or what. So I'm simply saying, let's look at an, a bigger picture of, we're building a country. We're building humans, uh, citizenships, rights. It's a lot what we're doing and uh, we need to do it correctly and the right way, yeah. And Sonny, we're certainly going to leave it on that note. We need to do things correctly and the right way when it comes to property. We mustn't take shortcuts, uh, you know, thinking that we're going to make an easy, quick buck. But understand that the journey is a long-term journey. And if sure. anything, it's a marathon. It is not a sprint. We're going to leave it there, Sonny. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you, Zama. Thank you, the audience who watched us. Thank you very much. God bless.
And that was also Limulefe Sitwaro, who's the founder and director of Set Mall. And that, of course, brings us to the end of the Private Property Podcast with myself, Uzamantu Nwa Kumalo. It has been a pleasure being with you this evening. Uh, and I think so many great things have come up from, from this conversation. I think one thing is clear is you want to make sure that you're adequately educated, uh, not just as a first-time home buyer, which is something that with private property we're quite passionate about. And that's why, of course, we have the first-time uh, home buyer show with SD Klaassen every Wednesday uh, just after the private property podcast but that when you are already now a homeowner you also understand your rights and responsibilities what you can and cannot do with the property that you have and how you can best manage it make sure that you grow it and make sure that you are able to you know in the next maybe five ten years so you've paid x amount and then leverage and then do some of the creative things that we certainly do speak about here on the private property podcast about the creative ways that you can utilize your home loan facility. So those are certainly some things that you should be thinking about, especially when you're in the relatively early stages of your property journey. Perhaps you haven't started actively investing in rental properties, but looking at doing so. So understanding that you should probably take a long-term view on it is something that is quite important. And that's a wrap from me, Zamatunga Kumala. I'm back again on your screens tomorrow evening where I'll be speaking to somebody who is no stranger to the Private Property Podcast and to those of you who been with us from day one he was actually one of the first guests one of the first two guests that we had here on the private property podcast and that of course is none other than Uzek Nieza we I will be speaking to him tomorrow evening so that promises to be a great conversation until then as usual hoping you're staying home and staying safe I'm Nobuntu Webster. I'm an entrepreneur. I moved to Santon to pursue a dream. I've based myself in Santon because it's the gateway to Africa. The neighborhood of Santon is alive. It's alive with possibility. It's got the most amazing vibe. If you need to get anything done, this is the place to get it done. One of the things I really love about Santon is how it lights up at night. If those lights don't inspire you, nothing will. Santon is the richest square mile in Africa. It has everything from shopping in Santon City to five-star hotels like a Michelangelo for my international guests. It works for me to be here. There are so many designer stores. There's an abundance of clothes and everything else to choose from. Being an entrepreneur, I travel a lot, so it's really convenient to be able to get onto the Howe train and in 15 minutes, I'm at the airport. Business is important to me, but my family is everything. And that's why my family and I are looking to move into one of the suburbs in Santon. Santon has some of the most exclusive homes in the country, in places like Hyde Park and Sandown. A little bit less fast-paced is your suburbs like Bryanston and Livonia. 
Bryanston was a natural choice. It's got great open spaces, it's safe. My son's already at a really good school there. Sandton gives me great variety from an awesome nightlife to beautiful places for lunch to spas where I can really relax and recharge. Things happen in Sandton and that's my neighborhood.